Greetings and salutations. Welcome to TFI. So, so, Windows 11 is just around the corner. And what that means is usually an absolute shitstorm for Autodesk software and their users because historically Autodesk software and new versions of Windows haven't gone on too well. They don't have a great past. So I've got a copy of Windows 11 off the Insider program. It's very early days. It's an alpha. And I've put it onto an AMD Ryzen 5800X build with a Quadro P5000. And because I've got access to pretty much every version of Autodesk software ever, I thought, you know what? Let's just install everything and see what happens. <laughs> Let's just put everything on within reason, right? You know, what most people would tend to use and what's currently supported. So let's put on like every version of supported AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, a few versions of Max, V-Red, Maya. Let's just see what works. See what happens. But before that, if you are interested in acquiring yourself a new workstation or laptop for your Autodesk software, but you're not sure what to buy and you just need someone to sort it for you, check out my new service in the description called the Workstation Studio. Uh, along with in that website, you'll see a whole bunch of links, including some discounts for Autodesk software. Uh, that's the Workstation Studio linked in the description. Great. I've just finished installing Maya 2020. I'm going to stop there, right? I've installed a canny bit. I've tested a few of them already just to make sure the video isn't a complete write-off before I get going, right? I don't want to just start opening things and just falls a bit. I'm like, oh, this is a complete waste of a video. This isn't going to go anywhere. I've installed AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor all the way back to 2019 and it worked flawlessly. Everything installed absolutely perfectly. And I, there's some people, well, it's not a surprise Windows 11 is exactly the same as Windows 10. It, you can't, yeah, you can't say that, right? Yeah, sure it is, but it's still a brand new operating system. It's not to be expected that it will just work, but it did. That's a bonus. So yes, I've gone back to 2019. That is the earliest version available in my Autodesk account. To be honest, if you're on an earlier version than 2019 of Autodesk software, you probably should be thinking about getting off that before you go to Windows 11. So I've gone back to AutoCAD Revit Inventor 2019, and then a smattering of other things, right? V-Red, Max 2022, Maya 2020, 2022... Fusion 360, a couple of alt clients. This is up for debate and it's very much an arguable point, but if full-blown AutoCAD works, then AutoCAD LT is probably going to work. Not necessarily, but probably. And the same goes for its verticals, the likes of Advanced Steel and AutoCAD Mechanical and all that kind of stuff. They've got their own modules and their own new additional tool sets that are you know not present in full AutoCAD. But if the core program works, then it's likely that you've bypassed a lot of the problems that would occur with an operating system issue. Okay, let's get started. So I've already opened a few of them, but we'll start again, right? We'll start with AutoCAD 2022. Everything, like I say, everything installed flawlessly and fully patched as well. Wow, Christ on a pedal bike. Did Revit have some updates? Is there any need for that? There must have been 30 or 40 updates for Revit alone. Ridiculous, but everything's fully patched and apart from this one, which... 2019.5 exists. Why does 20? Oh, never mind. Uh, I thought we'll put that on whilst it's waiting in the background. Right, 2022 AutoCAD opens fine. Let's open up. I've got a sample drawing on the desktop. To be honest, as long as the drawing opens, so I can't test all of the functions and I can't click every button. But it generally, if the program opens and you see that, I'm kind of happy that everything's cush. There may be a few, in fact, that there very well likely be something in there that's not going to work, you know, like a, I don't know, the hatch box or something. Uh, but what's the hatch these days? Has the hatch not got a dialogue box anymore? That's how long it's been since I used AutoCAD. Evidently not. Leia? Does Leia have a dialogue box? It does. Oh, it's a palette now. That's, <laughs> wow, it's been a while. Right. But I don't know, you know, there may be something in there that's not going to work. A, a niche function, but I can't check everything. Like I say, as long as it opens and runs, I'm going to give it a pass. So 2022 seems to be fine, right? 2021, let's dive in. And to be fair to Autodesk, right? Oh, shill. Oh, shill. No, right. Let's give them the credit. There was a time not that long ago, right? 2021 is a pass, where if you installed two versions of an Autodesk product on the same PC, it would kick off, right? Like, I mean, this was a long time ago, but like Inventor R10 and R11 or something on the same machine, they would conflict with each other. That's 2021 to pass. Now look, I've got Inventor 2019, 2021, 20, 22, AutoCAD 19, 2021, 20, 22, all on the same machine. 
and they all, I mean, I haven't run them yet, so there might still be problems, but they all installed without any issue at all. That's, as a credit to Autodesk. That's even possible. Right, let's open this up. 2020, Windows 11. Not bad, not bad at all. Seems to be working as well. Hello. Wrong button, Neil. Arrays. I'm, this is through remote desktop. That's why there's a, if it looks like, oh, it's a bit laggy, it's a bit flashy, it's through remote desktop. I'm not putting Windows 11 on my main production rig. Uh, as I get another robo caller, I'm getting absolutely hammered with robo callers on my phone at the moment. It's infuriating. Right, AutoCAD 2019, uh, and it's opening them pretty quickly. So this is an AMD Ryzen 5800X build. Majorly impressed with how fast everything is just installed, running, how fluid it all is. Go away. Yep, fine. That's AutoCAD complete pass. 22 down to 2019. Not a bother. Right, Revit. I don't know Revit. Right, uh, I'll try opening a sample file, but like, I, I don't know Revit. But we'll give it a shot. All right, and it goes, and what do we open? The sample architectural project? Sure. Uh, okay, I mean, it looks fine. I've run the Revit benchmark test, RF, RFO bench or something like that, whatever it's called. I've run that a few times, but beyond that, I don't know. Is that, that's 3D mode, isn't it? This looks fine to me, right? That's a pass. It, it, it installs, it runs. That's Revit 2022, seems to be okay. But you didn't click this, you didn't try that. Mate, did I open it twice? I might have opened it twice. That's Revit 2022, right? Let's try 21. Up she goes. I'm really enjoying how it doesn't start up maximize. That's, that's really helpful. So same project again. Uh, this is looking good so far. Revit 2021, fully patched 21.1.3. Okay, 3D mode. This is the metric that I'm going for. Oh, look at that, man. I'm a Revit Pro. Knew where the orbit was straight away. Yep. Pass. All right, 2020. All right, the path you have specified for the default family temp. I haven't specified any path, mate. What are you on about? I haven't done anything of the sort, right? Let's go into the... Sample again, 2022.4. Looking good again. Yep, fine, 2020. Seems good to me. Pass. Nope, right, 2019. All looking good so far. I'm gonna log in on that one for the license for some reason. Never mind, the license is kicking off all over the place, right? Another template. Thingy, never mind. I'm sure that's normal. All right, back into the sample architecture project for 2019.2.3. So looking good so far, though. Everything seems to be working suspiciously well. This is bizarrely going to plan far too well. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? All right, that's that's okay. So that's AutoCAD 22 down to 19. A okay. Revit 22 down to 19. A-OK -okay on Windows 11. Start with Inventor 2022. Right, I've already opened up this on Inventor 2022, but let's uh, open it again. I, I already know this works with 22. Like I guess it was part of it just to make sure everything was fine. And it is. I know 22 is okay. And it goes. So there's the drone. And I suppose we can right click on that. Open the part. There we go. Inventor 2022 is okay on Windows 11, right? Right, I'm just going to interject here very quickly. This might mean nothing. It's worth mentioning, though. The workstation that I'm testing on, I ran Invmark on this many times. If you're new to the channel, you probably don't know what it is. People who follow the channel, sick of hearing me talk about it. But I made a benchmark tool called Invmark. It's a performance testing tool for Autodesk Inventor. It grades your workstation, gives it a score, puts it on an online leaderboard. It's rather good. This workstation with the 5800X scores around 51,000 points on Invmark consistently with Windows 10. Obviously, I ran Invmark with Windows 11 just to make sure everything worked. I needed to check to make sure my program works on Windows 11. So I did. It worked fine. Everything ran great. All the tests ran fine. Inventor 2022 worked great on Windows 11. But the maximum score I could get was 47,000. So there's roughly about a 5% deficit on Windows 11. It's not massive, but it's there. And it's in single-threaded applications. Well, it's in assemblies. It's in the assembly workflows and a bit on graphics. So whether it's driver optimizations, whether it's 
I.O. There's a bit saved to disk and open files were a little bit slow. Whether it's just bus optimizations, I don't know. It's easy to just chalk this up as being an alpha. And, you know, it's an alpha. It's going to be slow. It'll get better. It's convenient to do that, which I'm going to do because I can't do anything about it. You know, I can't. I can't, I, I can't find what the problem is. I, I can only speculate and I don't really want to do that. Right, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'll just chalk it down to being an alpha. But what does that mean? Who's looking into where these where this deficit is and who's going to fix it? I don't know, but it is there. It's around 5% between Windows 11 and Windows 10 at the moment on Autodesk and Bender. So yeah, I just thought I'd report that. It is there and it's, it's noteworthy. It's tangible. And now we're into uncharted territory. In matter 2021. Again, we're looking good so far. Yeah, those messages, by the way, is because the file that I've got is from a very, very, very old version of Inventor. In fact, it was created in a beta version of Inventor. Beta, beta. Um, just to make sure that it could be opened in all versions. And you get a warning message when you open up a file created in a beta. But there we go. 2021 is all cush. On Windows 11. Onwards to Inventor 2020. All right, we're in no licensing shenanigans this time. This, the licensing thing, this, that's not a Windows 11 thing. That's absolutely an element of, wow, this guy has installed a lot of stuff on his system. Are we sure he's allowed to use all this stuff? <laughs> it's not normal to have that much stuff installed on one system at a time. All uh, right, let's open up model. At, at this point, I'm not expecting any issues. Like, so it's, it's just gone so much to plan. I haven't even seen so much as a prompt, an error, a warning, not a thing. I'm staggered. Not only am I staggered that all of this works on Windows 11, I'm staggered at just how much stuff you can have running concurrently on the same system. And it's not even using it that much. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's all relative, but I've got a half a terabyte drive, 465 gigs of storage, and I've still got 236 gigs of free space <laughs> with all that software installed. That's 2019. Oh god, that was ugly! Wow, they did a yeah. It, the the ribbon bar needed a, a, an upgrade after that, right? Let's get into this one. Let's get on with it. Conscious of time, it's <laughs> just opening and shutting programs. Wow, isn't this riveting viewing? Right? Yep, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's all I need to see. Yep, we're open. We're good. And that's Inventor. So that's Inventors. That's Revit's, and that's AutoCAD. That's all Kush. So we'll get them out of the way. So we'll open VRED. I didn't bother going all the way back to 2019. I think VRED, most VRED customers will be inclined to migrate up to 2022. I would have thought, you know, genuine VRED customers, just given how fast and rapidly this software is developed and what it gets each year, there's such an incentive to migrate. You'd be hard pushed to not migrate. So yeah, I think most people will probably be on quite a new version anyway. So we're in. Christ, I've been using that many other things. I forgot how to use it right. Ray tracing. Let's switch on GPU ray tracing. I assume this is going to... I've got a Quadro P5000 in here. And absolutely fine. That's with the denoiser. The denoiser is working. If we see the number go up to one, we are working. We are. We're working fine. Absolutely sweet as a nut. Sweet like Tropicano. We're good. So that's V-Red. V-Red's a pass. Fusion 360, we'll try that next. We've got the launch screen, that's a good sign. If, you, if you're kind of jumping across the timeline to see your, your particular program of choice and then you're fast disappointed that I'm not trying all kinds of different things, you kind of have to understand, yeah, I've got a lot to go through. I'm not, like I said at the very start, I'm not actually, like I, I can't click every button or, or, or even a sample. Because if I do try and sample some of the tools, there'll be so many people that go, well, that was pointless trying that one. That's not a representation of what would have taxed the operating system, right? You know, if I go into Fusion 360 and I try, I don't know, like the CAM modules, well, why try the CAM modules? Why not try simulation, right? You know, it's, a, it's pointless. It's, it's, for me, as long as it opens or installs and opens, and then I see that, I'm happy. So Fusion 360 on Windows 11, for me, is a pass, right? That's Fusion 360. We'll try Max, Max 22, and Max is open, right? Well, I didn't think this one through because I don't have a sample file for Max. Uh... I do actually, I've got my benchmark file, uh, which, ah, uh, the one that I use for my benchmark tests. 
which is on my network, which I'll have to pause the video whilst I go find it. Hold the line caller. And I'm back. Right, I've got it. So I've dropped it on the desktop. It is an Arnold file. I have no idea what I'm doing with Max. I really don't. It's one of those programs where it's like, I'd love to know what to do with Max, but so many other priorities in life. Uh, works. Happy with that. It opened a file. That's enough for me. Right, Max 22 is a pass. Lots of passes. Right, that's done. Uh, Maya. Again, I, I genuinely don't have a Maya scene. Like, that's a lost cause. I really don't have a Maya scene. But for me, as long as my at this point, right, every literally everything is opened. <laughs> everything has worked. So if Maya opens, I'm just going to give it a pass. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Looks good. Can I, can I do a cube? Oh, look at me, man. Check me out. Oh, I, I don't even know, like, left clicks, right clicks. That's so many, so many different ways of doing things in Autodesk. What's going on? Highlighting the incompetence, right? Let's shift that out of the way. That's a pass my 2020. Oh, that's nice. That starts up like three quarters of the screen. <laughs> What's it done that for? Right, maximize that. And okay, okay, okay. You look good. You look good. Nice little sphere. Don't know what I'm doing. Donuts, cones. Sure. Pass, pass, pass. Right, I think that's almost it. Just a couple of vault clients and then... Oh, Neil! Th that's remote desktop. Wrong. And we're back. Uh, <laughs> accidentally clicked the cross at the top of remote desktop instead of the application. One thing I've noticed, though, that's really annoying with uh, Windows 11, and this is... I imagine this is a setting somewhere which I just haven't found yet. As I open up Vault 22, when you close down remote desktop when you remote desktop into Windows 11, it shuts the PC down now. Instead of just signing you out, it shuts the whole computer down when you close down. That is, that's really annoying. Can you imagine that when you remote desktop into an office and you just shut down remote desktop and it shuts your remote PC down, like actually powers it off. You have to go over and walk, power the PC back on. You can, Microsoft, you can cut that out. Whoever thought that was a good idea, no, no. Right, Vault 22, I don't have a server to log into, so the client just openings up is enough for me. Right, that's Vault 22, 21. And this is the last one. Uh, fine, yeah, good. Not a single problem, not a single issue across every single one of these Autodesk applications on Windows 11. That's good. That's good. I mean, considering this is the alpha for Windows 11, that is a good sign. So let's just hope in between now and Windows 11 being released, somebody doesn't screw something up. You can use this as a reference. If something doesn't work <laughs> between now and it going live, come back to this video. Say, but it, it, it worked then. It, everything worked then. It installed and worked then. But there you go. Uh, Autodesk, you're welcome for doing a bit of QA for you. <laughs> but yeah, so just, I don't know, peace of mind for anyone who's on one of those versions thinking about going to Windows 11. Just want to see if, if it works. There you go. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Um, check out the links in the description for the Workstation Studio. Like I said, if you are interested in acquiring a new workstation, maybe for Windows 11 coming along, but you're not sure what to buy for Inventor or Revit or AutoCAD, you just need someone to decide for you and find yourself a spec, check out the links in the description. If you're interested in buying a or subscribing to a new Autodesk license, I've got discounts down there, part of my referral affiliate links. Uh, and... Again, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one.